Good morning and welcome to our April AT Talk. This morning we have Jalisa Irwin and Laura Hall and they will be talking about how to use assistive technology for recreation. Jalisa is an outdoor recreation specialist for the Michigan Assistive Technology Program or MATP at Michigan Disability Rights Coalition or MDRC. We love our acronyms, don't we? She has been with MDRC for 11 years. In the past 11 years, she has been a camp counselor, personal assistant, and has been involved with recruitment and registration process for a camp called Her Power, Her Pride. Jaleesa has a passion for the outdoors and enjoys hunting, fishing, camping, and rock hunting. With MATP, she takes her passions and informs the disability community about assistive technology for outdoor recreation. Laura, Assistive Technology Program Manager at Michigan Disability Rights Coalition, supports the program's advisory council and coordinates MATP's efforts with many other organizations, including the AT Leadership Team at Disability Network Michigan. She also manages and provides technical assistance to local organizations who provide device demonstrations and other services through the program. Laura provides training to the public through both webinars and in-person sessions and is a regular contribu contributor to MATP's blog. If you would like a sketch or a certificate of completion for this talk, please email me. I will put my email in the chat. Welcome, Jalisa and Laura. Okay, are we all set? Welcome everyone. Um, thanks for joining us today. Our topic uh, for today's AT Talk is assistive technology for outdoor uh, recreation and gardening. Um, as Diane said, my name is Laura Hall. Um, I use she, her, her pronouns. Um, and I am as Diane said, an assistive technology specialist with um, the MATP. I specialize in um, AT for gardening and also AT for environmental controls, which are uh, things that you can use, smart speakers, apps, um, other types of uh, ways to control your environment um, using different mechanisms. Julissa, would you like to introduce yourself? There, I am Jaleesa Irwin with the Michigan Disability Rights Coalition. I am the MATP's or Michigan Assistive Technology Program's Outdoor Recreation Specialist. Um, and that's about it. Can we go to the next slide, please? We wanted to start off uh, just helping you get to know a little bit about a little bit more about MDRC and what we're about. Um, so starting with just our mission. So MDRC cultivates disability pride and strengthens the disability movement by recognizing disability as a natural and beautiful part of human diversity while collaborating to dismantle all forms of oppression. Um, so uh, we look at disability from a disability pride perspective and recognize that our community is bigger than just disability, um, that we are uh, whole people that have um, issues that are affected outside our disability that affect the community as a whole. And so that is where that collaborating to dismantle all forms of oppression part comes in. Um, we look at the whole person. Our vision is that we envision a world where people with disabilities have space for self-discovery, to cultivate community, and to develop pride. Um, one thing important to know about our organization is that um, majority of MDR staff identify as people with disabilities. So our services are by people with disabilities, for people with disabilities, uh, and their allies. And uh, just as a point of access, we're going to be describing some of the features on the slides because we are um, wanting to meet everyone's needs. So the picture on this slide is of a young woman of color dressed casually, um, sitting in a manual wheelchair. 
Can we go to the next slide, please? Okay, so a little bit more about the Michigan Assistive Technology Program. Um, just to start, wanting to talk about how we define assistive technology. So um, for our program, we had defined assistive technology as any item, piece of equipment, software, product system that is used to help people with disabilities, including older adults, do what they need to do or do what they want to do. So a lot of times people think that assistive technology is um, primarily durable medical equipment, things like wheelchairs or walkers, or that assistive technology needs to be something high tech with a battery. Um, really assistive technology can be anything that helps someone do what they want to do, including you know, elastic shoelaces or something as simple as that, or the uh, medication reminder uh, pillbox that's shown on the screen on the bottom. Um, we provide AT related supports around the state, so we're statewide. Um, we provide normally hands on demonstrations of assistive technology devices. Um, that has been a little bit affected, that's been affected by COVID in the past. Um, now that COVID is changing a bit, we are moving more toward um, hands on demonstrations. And what that means is that um, if you contact our program, um, we would work with you individually to go through the features of a particular piece of assistive technology or pieces of assistive technology, um, show you how those work and compare and contrast features. Um, we provide awareness information about um, our program and assistive technology in general. We provide trainings um, like we are today. We partner with UCP Michigan um, for the assistive technology loan program. And uh, that provides, uh, is a loan program specifically for the purchase of assistive technology. Uh, we have a website called atexchange.org that's spelled A-T, the letter X, the word change.org. Um, I like to call this like a Craigslist of disability related equipment. So if people have used equipment that they're looking to sell or donate, um, they can post it on the ET Exchange and folks that are looking for that equipment can connect with the seller or the donator to obtain that equipment. Um, if you're looking for a piece of assistive technology and you're not finding it on the ET Exchange, you can also put up a wanted ad to, to indicate that you're looking for that kind of device that will go out to people that are subscribed to the Exchange as well. So well, that's kind of a quick overview of our services. Could we go to the next slide? Um, so types of assistive technology that the MATP offers, and this is not an exhaustive list. Um, this is some broad area. So we provide assistive technology for community living. So that would be things like um, dressing, waking, grooming, medication, um, everyday activities of daily living. We have assistive technology for low vision, um, assistive technology for mental health and recovery, assistive technology for neurodiversity. Um, as Jalisa said, um, She's our outdoor rec outdoor recreation specialist. So we have uh, AT for outdoor recreation, things like fishing, hunting, camping, biking, uh, bird watching, anything you can think of in the outdoors. Um, AT for gaming. So we're actually um, talking about video gaming and adaptive uh, ways to play video games. Obviously AT for gardening is one that we're gonna talk about today. I already spoke about the area that I am um, interested in, AT for environmental control. So those ways that you can use um, different mechanisms to automate or control things in your house, like smart speakers or um, apps to control different devices in your house. And one area that we are um, newly delving into is AT for parenting with a disability. This is really an area that we don't feel like it's a lot of attention. Um, so uh, this is a new area that we're delving into 
to help um, parents with disabilities. And just as a note of access, the picture on the slide is of um, two people sitting at a table looking at different uh, looks like crafting devices with magnifiers and different assistive technology devices. Can we go to the next slide, please? So um, we, again, like I said, we offer uh, device demonstrations and short-term loans of products if you're interested in if you receive a demonstration and think, wow, this would be really neat, I think it would be helpful to know how this would work in my own home, if I could borrow it for a little longer to see how it would really fit into my environment. Um, we do provide demonstrations and short-term loans of products. And to do that, you would meet uh, with one of our AT specialists. Again, we would review how the product or products work and compare and contrast features and talk about how um, that could help you do what you're look, looking to do um, eas more easily. And we have a dedicated um, phone number for our, our demonstration line. Um, as a point of access, I'm going to read that phone number. It is 1-800-578-0280. We also have a um, dedicated link that will take you to a requests form to request a demo. This will ask you a little bit of information about yourself, your contact information, what it is you're trying to do, and then one of our AT specialists will get back with you um, after we receive that request so we can go, go from there. That demo link is um, https backslash tinyurl.com backslash matp demo requests. Next slide, please. So um, just a little bit of housekeeping. Um, we are very um, flexible and would like to keep this fun and informal. So we uh, welcome you to um, ask questions throughout the session. You can feel free to unmute, raise your hand, type in the chat or the Q&A. And then we will also be asking a few questions of you throughout the session. Um, we'd like to know more about you and have this be a little bit more conversational um, so you're not just listening to us talk the entire time. Um, the picture on this slide is a picture of a light bulb um, with a uh, chalk drawing on a chalkboard of a thought bubble with the light bulb inside. Can we go to the next slide, please? All right, this is Jaleesa here. Um, so I'm going to talk about the outdoor rec program that we do have. One of our main things that when we are starting the outdoor rec program is we really want to focus getting people in the outdoors. Um, and one way to do that is a bunch of electric bikes. And we have quite a few options in our inventory. Um, the first one I'm going to discuss is the Liberty trike. On this slide, I have a picture of the Liberty trike, which is a three-wheeled bike. It has a seat with a back on it, and it also has a cargo basket behind the seat. This trike can go up to 12 miles per hour. Um, it does eight to 20 miles per charge, depending on how much you use the pedals, but it will go with just using just the throttle. It has a 300 pound weight capacity, and it takes three hours to completely charge this bike. And at its widest point, um, it's 25 inches. So it fits through most doorways. Next slide. The next bike I'm gonna talk about is the Rad Runner. And this image on the slide is a green fat tire bike. Um, it has kind of like a cargo rack on the back. Um, and this is for, being able to put accessories on there. So these bikes do, you can get accessories for um, to have passengers on the back, or you can put like a cargo rack um, to carry all of your things. This one goes up to 20 miles per hour, um, up to 45 miles per charge. And it takes about three to seven hours to charge this. And it also has a 300 pound weight capacity. Next slide. 
Um, we have the electric XP step through 2.0. Um, this is a blue and black fat tire bike. It has a uh, rear and front um, cargo baskets on it. It has a wider seat on it. And it also has a um, light in the front of it. So you're able to drive it with low light lighting. Um, the design of this bike is for you to easily step through it instead of stepping over a large bar. Um, this just makes it easier to get on and off of it. Uh, this bike goes 28 miles per hour, um, up to 45 miles per charge. It takes six to eight hours to charge it fully. And the weight capacity on it is 330 pounds. Next slide. And then here's another trike. This is the M350P7 electric trike. This is more of a heavy duty bike or trike. Um, this trike has fat tires on it. Um, it has a cargo basket in the front, but also in the rear. And this one will go up to 55 miles per charge. Uh, it has a 300 pound, 350 pounds plus 100 pounds payload capacity. It will go up to 25 miles per hour and it takes only four hours to charge this one. Next slide. Jalisa, can I ask a question? Yes. Um, can you talk a little bit about the benefit of the e-bikes and the way that um, you can pedal, but also kind of use the power of, of the e-bike. Yeah, so like Laura just had mentioned, um, you can use the pedals. Um, I know a lot of people may have troubles going up large inclines. Um, it may be difficult for them to pedal up a hill, and that's where the throttle and using the bike itself will come into play. Um, and you can just use just the throttle and the power of the electric bike to get you around. Um, I think that when you do, uh, like if you wanna go faster or whatever it may be, using both the throttle and the pedals will help you accomplish that. Um, and especially at, like on rougher terrain and stuff like that, it is nice to have the power of the bike to help you push through. So next I'm gonna go into a little bit of accessories or one accessory for the e-bikes and winter time, which we just got out of hopefully all the way. Um, so on this slide, I have two images. The first image is showing a tire with little spikes in it, which gives you just more traction um, in the snow and on the ice. Um, I have seen people take these out on the ice to go ice fishing, um, which I mean, seems fun, but also scary. <laughs> and then the next uh, image that we have is of a bike tire with chains on it, which also gives traction in the snow. Um, the chains are easier to take on and off that's just an easier option, but you also can have the option where you change out the entire tire. So that may be difficult um, to be like changing back and forth, I guess. So my, in my opinion, the chains are a really good option to, you know, be a quick, easy put on and off. Next slide. So we are gonna go into AT for hunting. Uh, I have three images on the slide. The first image is of a pop-up line that sets up within seconds. Um, and the cool thing about this blind is that the entire side pops up. So you're able, if you're a wheelchair user or ha would like to like easily get into the blind, there's no like triangle door to like stop you or have an obstacle to get around. Um, like I said, this is easy to pop up. You just pop out all four sides. And then when you want to get in, you just left the, up the entire set, uh, side of the blind. Um, the next image I have is a camouflage ghillie suit that um, is used for hunting. Um, and what's really awesome about this one is it's a poncho style. 
So this will easily fit over a wheelchair. Laura's has tested it out and it fit over her wheelchair perfectly. Um, so this kind of like hides the your wheelchair when you're out hunting and you need to be camouflaged to kind of hides, you know, the shiny parts and everything like that. Um, pretty useful. And then the last image I have on this slide is of a, um, they call it a game cart, which this can be used for multiple purposes. Um, it has four wheels on it, has a long handle on it. Uh, you can put wood to take to your campsite on there. You can put coolers on there and you also can use it to carry it out game out of the woods. Um, it just makes it easier than just dragging your game. Next slide. Laura, did you have something? No, sorry. Oh, okay. Um, and continuing um, on AT for hunting, we do have a couple different hoists here uh, to process your game. Um, just an easier way to lift uh, your game to process it, or rather than doing it on the ground, these can make them higher, so it's just easier. Uh, the first image that I have is of a hoist attached to a tree. And to operate this, you would really just pull the, or reel the winch um, to raise your game or unreel it to lower your game. Um, and this is a really good option because it attaches to any tree. So if you have the option of trees around, uh, it's a good way to attach or to raise your game up with little materials around you. Um, and then the next two images is showing uh, another game, the type of game hoist that attaches to the hitch of your car or truck or whatever vehicle you may be using. And this, you, I think, I believe it's like a two inch hitch post. Um, and this again, just helps you raise your game, game off the ground. Uh, it, both of these, I believe, are 300 pound capacity um, and they move fairly easily and instead of like really working to raise up your game. Next slide. And we're continuing AT for hunting. I didn't know there was so much stuff out there for hunting. Um, the first image on the slide is of a heating suit. Uh, this heating suit retains all of um, your body heat and it has little arm slots on it. So you're able to put your arms out and use whatever equipment that you may need to use. Um, it has a soft or it has like a soft feeling to it. So it, and soft material. So it's not crunchy to keep you quiet in the woods, which is important. Um, and the zipper is easy to use. It's an easy pull zipper. And um, it keeps like 90% of your body heat inside of it. The next image I have is of a, oh, there we go, um, is of a heated hand muff. And so this is like a long piece of fabric that is insulated. And it comes with a carrying bag and it also has a battery pack on it. So when your hands do get really cold, um, you can just put your hands inside of it and there's different settings. Um, depending on which setting you use kind of determines how long the battery lasts. And another cool thing about this is it can strap around your waist if you wanna just keep it strapped around, around you as you go to wherever you're going. And then you just have it there. And if your hands get cold, you just kind of stick it in the pocket. And the last image that I, oh, go there. and the last image that, that I have on I'm the so slide. Sorry, Elise, I'm so okay. sorry, I keep trying to anticipate. I'm just gonna wait for you to say next slide. <laughs> All right, perfect. And the last image on the slide that I have is of a marsh, marsh seat. Um, this is a lightweight seat that you can carry around with you. Um, a lot of people use them for duck hunting. Um, I've used it for rock hunting. So it's lightweight, has a strap on it, and you can just kind of throw it over your shoulder and take it out. The seat, 
kind of like folds out. So it's kind of like a post, but it has like a wider seat for you to sit on. And um, down at the bottom of it, it has two little pieces of metal that pop out. Um, so you can't sink into the ground too far. And next slide. Now we are getting into AT for fishing. I have four images on the slide. The first one I have is of a tying tool. It's kind of like a closed pin device. It has three holes on it. The hole at the top is the place where you can set your lure or the eyelet of your lure on there. The second hole is where you feed in your fishing line and then you're able to twist it and tie your knot. And then the uh, third hole is for you to cut whatever access fishing line that you may have. And the next image I have is of some little clip-on bells that clip onto your fishing line. And this will indicate if you have a bite or not. Um, this is for our low vision or blind users. And this little, these little items have like, a, like I said, a clip and then two little bells on there. And the clip will attach to your fishing line. And when you get a bite, they should ring. <laughs> um, and then the next image that I have is of a fishing rod holder. And this is kind of like a long or kind of long PVC pipe that has like a little slit in it for your fishing reel and rod to go into. And then attached to that is a black, uh, I guess, mounting device that can go onto wheelchairs, walkers, or camping chairs. And what you would do is just attach that to your wheelchair and then twist the knob and you have a fishing rod holder. And then my last image I have is of large bobbers that are neon fluorescent yellow. Um, and these just make it easier to see where your bait is or um, whether to indicate if you have a bite or not. Using a light color um, is easier to see rather than using like a dark blue, blue color or darker colors, I guess. Next slide. And now we are getting into AT for bird watching. Um, so the first image that I have on this slide is of a binocular harness. Um, and what it does is it kind of goes around your back. Uh, the straps go around your back. So you have straps going over your shoulders and then you have a strap, two straps going around your waist. And then there's two little clips, um, on the ones that on the straps that go around your waist and what this does is it just clips onto whatever binoculars that you may have um, this is beneficial to keep your binoculars close to you um, so they're not kind of you know going all around if you're out in the woods and you're going over and under trees or whatever it may be it just keeps them close and secure to you and it also uh, creates it so there's less strain on your neck compared to just like the regular neck strap that comes with binoculars. Um, the second image on the slide is of a mononocular or a mini scope. Um, you can use it one handed. Um, it has kind of like a video camera uh, recorder uh, strap on it. So it makes it easier to use it one handed. And you can also use this just with its one eye use. Um, and then the next device kind of connects to like the mononocular or just your regular binoculars. And this is a phone adapter, um, that will attach to binoculars and has, it kind of looks like a magnifying glass, I guess is the best way to describe it. And you can, it has an adjuster so that you can put your cell phone on there attach it to the binoculars and you'll be able to see whatever is in the binoculars on your phone. Um, and then you're able to take pictures or you can see the image better. Uh, you can also mount your binoculars to a tripod and you can just kind of see what's in your binoculars on your phone. Next slide. 
And we have AT for camping. Um, again, I have three images on the slide. And the first image that I have is of a raised uh, cot. Um, this cot can hold up to 600 pounds. It is 15 inches off the ground and it has dual layered fabric to make it soft and fluffy. Um, and it also comes with a carrying bag. And the next image that I have is of a headlamp. Um, this particular one is tealish blue with a white strap, I guess. And this has an on and off switch up at the top of it. Um, what this does is it just goes over your head and you're able to use a flashlight uh, without using your hands. Um, so you're able to do whatever you need to do with light. Um, really useful, has an on and off switch on the top of it. Uh, I believe this exact one that you can adjust the light on it so it can go more towards the ground or it can go higher up depending on whatever setting that you would like. And it also has three different uh, brightness settings. So lower, kind of bright, and then really bright. And I remember, Jalisa, we went out on a kind of a trial camping trip. I remember using this in the middle of the night um, it, with my chair just because it was so hard to see the terrain where I was rolling. And so it was very helpful just to be able to see, like, uh, if I go to the right, I'm going to fall out a hole. Um, so I also found it very useful just with using a chair and not um, navigating that way, too. Yes. Yeah. And these are great. Um, I use them all the time. I use them when I go rock hunting. Um, I actually, I use them when I'm clipping my child's fingernails. <laughs> like, it's just great. You, you have use. You, it's just so many uses for it. It's, I love it. <laughs> I have many of them. Um, so then the next item and the next image that I have is of a pop-up tent. Um, this tent is 10 by 10, it's portable, and it can sleep six people. Um, it's 78 inches tall, and there's no assembly required. It's just, there's no like connecting the poles together. It's literally, you just pull the poles out and it pops up. Um, so yeah, it's pretty, it's a pretty nice tent. I am looking, uh, I know that they make tents with like lower lips, I guess you call them or call it to get into the entryway. Um, but I'm having a difficult fi want time finding one that is it's decent size and it's also easy to set up. Um, so I am in the process of that. The search continues. Uh, yes. <laughs> and next slide. Um, here's a little bit more of AT for winter, um, which I hope we don't need to use it anymore. Um, but, and this is also good for hiking. This first image that I have is of spikes that can go on canes or walkers. And this little device just uh, clamps to your cane or walker. And it, there's two poles that go down and there is a set of four spikes on there. And what this does is it just makes so that your caner walker doesn't slip on any ice. Or if you are hiking, it just gives you a little more traction for uh, that use. And then the next image I have is of a pair of boots. Um, and there are little uh, ice cleats, I guess you can call them, that it are attached by rubber that goes around the toe of your boot and the heel of your boot. Um, these come in all different sizes. Uh, they have like little diamond shaped spikes on the bottom of them, um, which make it great for walking on ice or slippery terrain. I use these quite a bit for ice fishing um, and they're easy on and off. And they last for, a really, really long time. I know the pair that I have has lasted me probably 10 years. So they're pretty durable. Next one. Oh, did you have something, Laura? Nope, I'm sorry. 
Okay. All right. And then next I have is a couple uh, apps for outdoor recreation. Um, I love finding new places to go, um, whether it's beaches or places to camp or places to hunt. And these kind of help me like determine the area, um, definitely see like kind of what I'm getting into. So Michigan DNR accessibility website has an actual tab on it where you can click uh, the accessibility feature. And this will give you all the accessible beaches, cabins, camping, fishing, hunting, kayaking, uh, shooting ranges, places where you can rent track chairs or borrow track chairs and accessible trails. Um, and so that's kind of cool. Like if you have an idea of where you wanna go in Michigan, um, you can just type in that area and all of these accessible beaches uh, or whatever it may be will come up. The next uh, app that I have on here is All Trails. So this is an app to find different hiking trails, um, trails to get to bird watching or whatever it may be. Um, they have kind of an option, they have options to pick like wheelchair accessible, um, whether it's paved or not, it has an indicator of the level of difficulty and it just kind of gives you like an idea of what the trail is gonna be like. And you can also use it as like a GPS too. Um, and I believe it also has pictures of the trail. So you can kind of determine yourself if it's something that you do want to do. All trails is all across, I believe it's all across the United States, um, but you just pick the location that you want to go and it will give you the trails in that area. And then recreation.gov, um, this is an app, but it also you can access it on just your regular desktop. Um, this is where a lot of times you have, like when you're going camping, a lot of times you have to make reservations, the days of putting your money into a little tube, um, those days are pretty much over. So recreation.gov is where you can do that at. Um, like I said, camping reservations, pictures of the campsite or cabin that you may be renting. Um, you can pick what type of site you're looking for, whether it's needs to be accessible, um, whether you're tent camping, RV camping, whatever it may be. And this also, like I said, you can see pictures of the place. I'm a very visual person. I wanna know what I'm getting into before I go there. Um, I wanna know what's around that campsite. I wanna know like if is it next to the water or whatever. Um, so I really like recreation.gov. And next slide. This is you, Laura. <laughs> You're muted. Got so excited. I was talking before I was unmuted. Um, so we're going to switch gears a little bit and, and talk about another type of recreation, which is assistive technology for gardening. Um, I have one picture on the slide, and this is of my, uh, my garden last year. Um, there's a photo of a raised garden bed where I have some growth. I'm, I've actually, actually in this bed, I used um, an extra part to my dog's crate. Uh, there was an extra door. So I took that out because we didn't need it and used it as a trellis and grew um, green beans and radishes. So this picture is of um, my beautiful tangle of mess of green beans climbing up the trellis and uh, some radishes in the front that didn't quite make it last year, but I did end up with one. So I know that um, Jalisa and I have done some talking for the last, you know, half an hour. Or so I thought we could take just a quick break. And I wanted to ask, um, do you garden? And if you do, what do you like to grow? Or what, what are you anticipating growing this year? Um, if you want to unmute yourself, type in the chat. Just want to start a little conversation. Yeah, they'll need to type in the chat because we don't have the ability to unmute in this. Oh, one. okay. But if they type in, in the chat, I'll be happy to read that for you. Great. Thanks so much. While we're waiting, I'll tell you that I'm a succulent person. I started with succulents um, at the, I, I, I had plants years ago, but I started with succulents at the beginning of the pandemic. And now I've had to buy extra lights twice. 
And because I started in the windowsills and then it became winter and I realized, oh no, I'm going to need lights. And now I propagate so much that um, my significant other is talking about sneaking in here at night and throwing away some of the leaves so that I don't, because if they grow roots, I can't throw them away. I have a weird thing about throwing away a live thing. So I don't, yeah. yeah, does anybody have any questions they'd like to ask at this point or anything you'd like to grow? So I've tried a raised uh, garden a couple of times, but I never am able to get any fruit. <laughs> so I think my soil might not be quite right, or I think sometimes uh, animals get to it, even though you wouldn't yes. think so because it's a raised bed, but squirrels climb things. So some things get in there and start digging and dig stuff up, so... Um, there's also deer deer i mean the raised garden beds are just perfect for the deer so they're, they're the perfect height for them to just put munch. their head over my fence and munch away right um do we have any comments in the chat no not at this time okay well if you think of anything um you know that's fine can we go to the next slide okay so i'm just gonna uh review a little bit about what I'm going to cover when we talk about AT for um, for gardening today, we're going to start with talking about um, types of garden beds and also options for indoor gardening. We're going to go through some gardening tools, um, different types of assistive technology for hoses and sprayers. There's assistive technology to help with seeding and planting your seeds. Of course, the um, the job that we all love our gardening and is weeding um, so we have a system assistive technology tools to help with that and then also the best part of it all is harvesting once you've grown um, so we have some assistive technology that we're going to talk about for harvesting um, there's only one picture on the slide and this is of a young um, man of color who is using ASL um, communicating with uh, communicating with someone else so I do have a question. Um, the person asked, what size are these planters? So I think it would have been not, well, you can talk about the size of these, but I think that the comment came before this slide. So if you want to talk about the size of the planter you were showing, Laura, from your garden last year, and then also maybe the size of these. Sure. Um, I don't know if I can give you uh, exact dimensions, Marguerite, but we can kind of talk about in generalities, height, and um, and in width and things like that. So one of the first things that I wanted to talk about is uh, some terminology because I think um, when we talk about raised garden beds, that can mean a lot of different things to different people. Um, I know if you do a search for raised garden beds, a lot of times you'll get images or products that are, um, you know, the, the boxes that sit on the ground that are maybe a foot or two off the ground. Um, that maybe are four by six that you can plant a small plot in. Um, those can be those can be helpful to a lot of people in many ways in assistive technology themselves. Um, oh, the, those that fit on the balcony. Um, we can we'll get to those a little in a, in a minute, I think. Um, so. Um, so the one that's shown on the top is um, about a foot high, maybe maybe a foot and a half, um, and a couple feet wide. And uh, this is what a lot of people call a raised garden bed. When I think about raised garden beds, I think about raised waist height garden beds um, that can um, that I can pull up to with my wheelchair. So um, the first uh, there's let's see five images on the slide i talked about the first one which is the uh the just the box that's on the the ground uh, there are garden beds that are on four legs and um about four feet by six feet that you can grow different types of vegetables in um i did have one of these that i've shown in the the left hand picture with the four legs and the uh the, rather shallow bed. Uh, I think 
and you can get these for under a hundred dollars on Amazon and things like that. Um, the problem I think with some of these is that you have to be really careful about the weight that you put in it because they're not designed to hold a lot of weight. Um, I had one of these garden beds on the four legs for about a season and because of the weight and the watering, um, and I think just because of some of the design, I mean, you kind of get what you pay for. Um, it fell apart after about one season. So um, the next picture on the slide, which is in the, the middle, the bottom middle, is the one that I'm using now. Uh, Marguerite, I may have to, to look up the exact dimensions of this and, and send it to you. But um, this is one that is uh, is meant for a wheelchair to roll under. So it's got solid sides. Uh, it's got solid panels on the sides and openings on the front and back so you can access it from a chair. Um, it also has two different heights. So when I was showing the picture of my garden bed um, on the first slide, I was growing, um, I think I was growing green beans in the back where it was um, deeper and then radishes in the front where it was more shallow so it enables you to grow um, at two different heights i really like uh this bed because they're re it's reinforced on the on the corners and i think that's kind of the key to um developing a lasting garden bed is having those supports and the weatherproofing in place um, these are uh, a bit more expensive so if if, if the one with the uh, the four by six box and the four legs is a hundred dollars. This one was more like two hundred or three hundred, um, but you can make these yourself too. And there's a lot of YouTube videos and, and DIY um, plans for making garden beds yourself. Um, the next one on the slide is a garden bed that has um, that has wheels on one end and legs on the other. It has a handle on one side and a um, shelf underneath that is a a garden bed um fairly small garden bed but something that's portable that you're able to move if you'd like to move it around i know i have one of those yards where it seems like the, the sun moves every day even though that doesn't make any sense um so like having that option of maybe moving it um if it's not catching the right sunlight um is kind of appealing another um, example that we have of a type of, of garden bed, raised bed, or something that may be more accessible to someone is um, the vertical tiered garden bed. So these, this is like a frame that has uh, five tiers on it um, with, uh, with um, like the, uh, the window, the window ledge type uh, growing pots that you can stack on top of each other and grow vertically so that that's another option and laura i looked up the specs on the balcony like garden raised garden bed um the vertical one and this is 20 inches wide um like to front to back 46 inches tall so four foot tall and from side to side it's 22 inches wide we're also going to talk about some indoor gardening options um, on the next slide. So maybe that's something that would be of interest as well. So I think, um, so I just wanted to go back to the terminology. I don't think I really went through all the way through that. So when I'm talking about in-ground plots, obviously I'm meaning that the, plot, the, the, the pots that are just in the ground, um, to me, raised garden bed, it could be the boxes on the ground or it could be the ones that are waist height. A lot of people call them ADA compliant or barrier free garden beds or also wheelchair accessible garden beds. So I just kind of wanted to go through all those terms because um, it's a little bit of a hunt to kind of find what you're looking for. You might have to use a combination of, of different um, search terms. And I don't know if we mentioned this at the beginning, but I did want to let everyone know that we have cre created a, a resource guide um, which has all the links to everything that we're showing as well as the name. So if you want to go back later and find out more information, um, we're going to be sending that out through email to the people who register for the webinar. Um, so every chat right every, now so they can open it right now also. Oh, okay, great. Great. Yeah. So um, yeah, if you want to take a look at these as we're going through it, um, they should all be there. Can we go to the next slide? Okay, 
So um, another option that a lot of people are using now is indoor gardening. And um, the things that I, these can go from very simple to um, quite elaborate. <laughs> so I've showed, um, I have two pictures on the slide. The first one is of um, a system called the Grow LED system. It comes with um, eight pots, eight small planters that are in a tray um, with a 20 watt, 20 watt bulb um, over top. This uh, can be set as a, um, on an auto timer. And so um, you can set it up each day so you don't need to worry about it. This is uh, rather lower tech and around $50. The second one that I have on the screen is something called the Aero Garden, and there's several versions of this. There's like the Elite version, the 360. Um, I think the one that I have shown on this slide is the Aero Garden Elite, and this is actually hydroponic growing, so you're not using soil at all. You're growing in water, and it comes with... Um, six pods that are already seeded with um, things like dill, basil, thyme. It also uh, comes with pods of plant food. Um, and then there's the buttons on the bottom of this um, product to enable you to uh, set it for vacation mode and to adjust the, uh, the settings on it as well. So this is something that you could set up and potentially leave for a week or so if you were to go on vacation. I really believe I, these pictures show things like peppers and little um, little grape tomatoes growing. I think you can grow things like this, but I really think they're intended for more like herb growing and gardening just because of the space. There's not a lot of space, but if you are in one of those situations where you're in an apartment or don't have a lot of space for growing outdoor, um, I think these indoor gardening options are, are pretty cool. So just wanted to bring those up. Um, can we go to the next slide? So um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about gardening tools that are um, that have some accessibility features and make them easy to use. Um, there's two pictures on the slide. The first picture is um, of something called the Ergi Shovel, E-R-G-I-E. Um, and this is a uh, bowl rake. So what's nice about this garden tool is that it has an extra handle on it. So while you're uh, raking, you can grab it at the top. And also there's a, um, a handle about midpoint on the rake that's used to assist with the raking as well. And um, the second image on, on the slide is um, of a rake by a company called Corona, which is extendable. Um, we also have other, Lisa, correct me if I'm wrong on this, but I believe that we also bought other types of of um, these where we have, they have rakes and cultivators and hoes and um, they're all extendable they're using the same system that we are just showing the, um, the rake in this one. So this comes there are several different options that you can buy that have the same function of the extendable uh, of the extendable heads. Can we go to the next slide? Okay, so ergonomic hand tools. Um, there are three pictures on this slide. The first picture is of a set of tools by a company called Radius Garden, and um, this set, this four-piece set, um, includes a trowel a transplanter, a weeder, and a cultivator. Um, what's nice about this, um, these tools is that they have ergonomic handles that are shaped kind of like umbrella handles or curved. And so they're, they're more ergonomically designed um, to help with gardening and things that are like arthritis or wrist pain um, designed with that in mind. They're lightweight aluminum um, and really have a nice uh, grip and feel to them. Um, the other picture on the slide that I have, it's a little blurry, is um, a garden fork that's attached to a um, arm cuff. So this is sold by a company called The Right Stuff, and this cuff goes around your wrist and has a um, handle that allows you to kind of hold it with your whole hand at 
like a 90 degree angle. Um, so that's helpful for a lot of people who need like a larger grip. And what's nice about this system is that you can buy the grips for any of your own hand tools and attach them to your own hand tools. And you can also buy the arm cuff. The arm cuff is interchangeable with the different um, with the different sets of tools that this company sells called uh, the right stuff is a company that uh, sells this and they have a set of garden tools that are meant to work with these garden cuffs so the are the arm cuffs so the cuff just kind of slips in and out of um, the hand tools and then the final picture on this slide is of some long handled um, tools by the same company these again have that um, that grip on it that you can grab with your whole hand at a 90 degree angle to help use a tool and again you could add the arm cuff to that so these are um, these are very long for a longer reach so you don't have to bend and stoop as much and included in this um, set is a um, let's see it's a, a long-handed trowel a fork a cultivator and a hole and so um, I like that this system has interchangeable parts and they it, they also sell the, um, the option where you can add the grips to your own hand tools as well can we go to the next slide um, okay so looking a little bit at sprayers and hoses um, there's a lot of different needs when it comes to sprayers I think for some people um, you know, holding down that nozzle, that handle can be really difficult. And so I was excited when I was doing research on gardening to find that there were some different options for sprayers. Um, I have three pictures on this slide. The first picture is, um, is of a sprayer head that uses, they call it a fireman's hose. So it's actually a big grip um, that you push back and forth. You could do it with one hand to control the pressure of the water. Um, so if you need more of a um, um, a bigger grip, this would, or um, I'm trying to think of the word I'm looking for here, not fine motor, but gross motor. So if you need like more of a bigger grip, this might be helpful for someone who needs to use their whole hand. Um, for me, I, I really like the second picture on the slide. Um, this is one that I happen to use in my garden. It's called um, the Relax Grip one by Melner, and it has a um, it has a lever near the handle that you control with your thumb. That um, by pushing it just slightly back and forth, you can also um, control the the the, um, the flow of the water and spray. It also comes with um, an eight pattern system on the head. If you turn the head, it will um, give you different spray patterns. It's very lightweight, very comfortable. Um, I really like the fact that I can just turn it on with my thumb and it'll stay on and I don't need to hold it. Um, I know coiling and uncoiling and tangling of um, hoses can be a really difficult part of gardening and I really don't trust any guarantee that a hose will never kink because I've never seen that happen. Um, but this is a hose that I've researched that has been a really high rated called the Flexilla. And it is designed in a way that it, um, it easily uncoils and then kind of leads itself to kind of coil back up again. So um, it, uh, it's, it's a good mixture of being a strong hose um, without you know there are some of the other hoses that are kind of made of more of the canvasy type uh, material or stretchy material and i i like how lightweight those are but i also struggle because i don't feel like they last for more than about a year if if something can poke a hole through those then um you've pretty much lost your hose for the season so this is kind of a nice um a nice in between, I think, between the heavy duty hoses and the and the lightweight hoses that can get damaged easily. Can we go to the next slide? Okay, so seeding. Um, we have some really interesting assistive technology for seeding. Um, there are three pictures on the slide. The first one that I'm going to talk about is called the seeding square, and this is a plastic uh, template that you can push into the ground or into your garden plot 
And what's neat about it is that it has various colors, uh, various circles that are color coded on the seating square and are spaced at certain intervals. And then um, it comes with a guide that tells you every type of um, vegetable or herb um, that would be spaced at that color. So, for example, if um, you're trying to grow radishes and radishes are red, you're just going to put a seed in every red hole that you see on the seating square. So for folks, I mean, I don't know um, how far things, how far apart things should grow or, or be planted. That, that, so that was helpful for me in that way. Folks are not good at measuring or spacing or just kind of understanding measuring, I think can be really helpful. Uh, this comes with a funnel and a uh, measuring stick that you can use to kind of drop the seed right down in. And then it has a measuring, um, instrument on the side that shows you how far to to poke it down into the soil as well so um that helped me last year create kind of a nice really straight garden and um i think the seating square is is a really cool device that we found there's something similar um but not quite as involved um the next picture on the slide is a garden ruler by a company called Intervail, and it just simply has um, different types of uh, plants labeled on the ruler with how many inches apart they should be. So, for example, in the picture, it shows that that peas should be 12 inches apart. So you would put your seed into the um, the hole that says peas, and then um, go back to the end of the ruler and then put it in again. And so it also comes with a stick for poking it into the ground and just helps to kind of um, help with that spacing issue again. And then um, I, I think we've all probably dealt with those tiny little seeds that are really hard to even um, take out of the package. So the third image on the slide is just of a simple like seeding um, disc. So you put your small seeds in the disc, you can adjust the size of the opening. And then um, it also kind of comes with a triangular funnel piece to it that allows the seeds to fall fall out at a rate that's not um, going to be too quick. I think that's the hard part with, with small seeds, in my opinion, is that they come out so quickly um, and then you don't know where you're growing. So uh, these just require a little tap. They're fairly inexpensive and, and low tech, but um, can make a big difference. Can we go to the next slide, please? Weeding. Oh, gotta love it. Um, I have been, like Julissa, I've been on the hunt for more products that are out there to help with weeding, but here are a couple that I've found. Um, the first, there are three pictures on the slide, um, and there are two products that I'm going to talk about. The first one is called a weed, a weed zinger. Um, this device kind of looks like a pogo stick to me. It, um, it sticks in the ground. It has a plate to put your foot on where you can push the, um, push the device into the ground where the weeds are. And then near the top, there's a handle and also a twisting device that helps you to pull the weed out um, by twisting. So you put it in the ground. You twist it, you pull it out, and there your your weed has come out. There are two different views shown on the slide. So the first one is just of the device itself. Um, the second picture on the slide shows the device kind of in the ground around some dandelions where you can see how it, how it could help pull those out of the ground. Um, the second product that I found to help with weaning is something called the Cobra Head. Um, and it really does look like a... Uh, a cobra head snake so it's got an ergonomic handle on it um, that's curved around and the head of the weeding device where the blade is uh, looks like a snake head the blade is on the inside it's got you know that comfortable handle that lightweight um, ergonomic ability to help um, with pulling weeds so still on the hunt for good weeding devices if uh, anybody's found anything i'd love to hear about it at the end um, but these are a couple that we found. So can we go to the next slide? Thank you. Um, 
So this one, I, uh, this slide I, intend, I entitled Tending Tools. These are just some um, various assistive technology things that can help with gardening. There's uh, four pictures on the slide. The first one is of um, just a kneeling pad. It's about three inches thick, um, textured foam, uh, really comfortable to, to kneel on. It has a handle just to kind of save your knees and your legs and make things more comfortable as you're trying to tend to your garden. Um, the two pictures in, in the upper part of the slide um, are of a, a product that is called a, a garden bench or kneeler. So you can flip this one way and it's a garden bench with two legs and it has a bag on the side and you can sit on it. Um, this actually has a pretty good weight capacity. I think Julie said we looked looked it up and it was over 300 pounds, if I remember right. Um, so the nice thing about this is that it can be a bench or if you're needing it for kneeling, you can flip it upside down so the legs are actually up in the air and use it for kneeling to tend to your garden. Laura, I just want yes. to let you know we're 10 minutes from losing our captioner. So Okay, okay, I'll be quick. I think I'm getting right toward the end here. Um, the the final item on the slide is a uh, is a scooter, um, a garden scooter. So it has four fat tires, a seat, and a bucket underneath for your gardening tools that you can use with your feet, um, just to kind of pedal around your garden um, to kind of save your back. And we found that has been really helpful for a lot of people. Can we go to the next slide? Okay, finally we get the harvesting. So this is um here are some products that we have that can help when you're trying to um pick your produce. I know for me when I'm trying to collect collect things out of my garden, a lot of times it's rolling away from me. I'm trying to drive my wheelchair and hold on to things at the same time. So I found it really interesting that there are things out there to kind of help you just carry uh the things that you pull out of your garden. So there are three pictures on this slide. Um, the first one is of a man who's using a system similar to what Jalisa was talking about with the birding binoculars, where it has um, padding in the back and then it goes around the shoulders. And there's a bucket that is attached to the straps in the front, so that you can so that you can pick your um, your produce and put it in the bucket. There's um, another bucket which uh, goes around the waist. Kind of like a fanny pack that has a uh, that has a plastic bucket and a lid on it that um, is held in a holster, and then we have an um, an apron with easy to, to untie strings. Um, it's shown in the picture with somebody uh, holding apples in it, and so you just undo those strings and then can unload your harvest easily and wear it while you're while you're picking your produce. That is another harvesting tool. Um, can we go to the next slide? Oh, okay. So we're at the end. Um, I just wanted to have a few minutes for questions. Does anybody have any questions about what we saw today? Did anybody see anything new or or that you hadn't seen before? I wrote a few things down. I want to know how my garden can grow enough that I would actually need one of those harvesters. <laughs> <laughs> what comes out of my gar garden, I can fit in a pocket. So. Yeah, I, I could see a lot of people using that for apple picking or, yeah. you know, things like Great. that. But, uh, I remember just trying to carry things from my wheelchair from my garden to the house and they're rolling all over. So for me, I think definitely something wearable would be super helpful. Yeah, I agree. No, it was great. I loved all of your suggestions and all of the things that you posted. I can't wait to go shopping. I want to go check out an electric bike now. Yeah. And, and if you want to borrow one of those, we, we can, you could try it out before you buy it. So let us really? know, Diane. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll we have wheel. six, we have six different options to choose Thank from. You. Right. Thank you. <laughs> so as we're, as we're wrapping up and before we lose our captioner, um, 
Um, Jalisa and I really appreciate you coming today and your attention. Um, one of the things that really helps us is um, we receive federal funding to run the program, the Michigan Assistive Technology Program. And it would be helpful for us if you could just provide um, a little bit of information about yourself. Um, the things that we need to know for our data is, would you be willing to share what county you are joining us from and how you identify? So do you, if you identify as a person with a disability or a family member or a representative of healthcare, just kind of give us an idea of, of who you are and how you came to us today and what county you're from. Please so we put that, that in the chat. chat. Also, while um, people are doing that, I did want to bring up that we will be having a, an event at Stony Creek Metro Park. Um, it's an e-bike event. I'm We're kind of partnering with an e-bike club that's off of Facebook. Um, we want to make it an inclusive environment. All are welcome. Um, and we will have all of our e-bikes there. So if you're free on May 7th and you live near Stony Creek Metro Park, um stop in and say hi and test out some of the e-bikes and if you can't make the event uh don't hesitate to shoot me an email and we can set up a demonstration lovely i'm going to talk just briefly about our next assist at talk while people are putting that information in next month we're going to talk about making friends with technology guiding preparing for adjusting and incorporating assistive technology Melissa Mosel, who's worked for the state of Michigan, Michigan Rehab Services for 15 years um, as a vocational rehab counselor and now a training consultant. Um, she will be talking about determining assistive technology needs can come with apprehension, uncertainty, and excitement. So this session will share some communication techniques that can be helpful in many aspects of determining and acclimating to life with AT. We invite you to join us for that session on Thursday, May 12th at 10 a.m., Making Friends with Technology. Just wanted to throw that in there before we lost everyone. And please do put your county and whether or not you identify as a person with a disability in the chat, and I will make sure that that information comes back to um, the AT program. And gosh, guys, I thank you so much. I learned so much today. And it's so wonderful to be in that place now as spring comes to yes. about things to do outdoors. So it makes a huge difference. And I really appreciate your being here today to talk about it. Thank you. Thank you. Again, anything that you've seen today, um, we have available if you want to try out and take out for a short term loan. And so, you know, it's it's always great to try before you buy. Um, and that's what we're here for. So I marked down like three things that I'm going to be checking on from your resource list. So excellent. I think I will have for uh, my next holiday when somebody asks me what I'd like to have <laughs> list already. So thank you all for joining us, and we look forward to speaking and seeing you with you all next month. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye, everyone.